Have you ever wondered about the profound prophecies of Daniel in the Bible and how they connect with actual history and the impending terror awaiting humanity in the end times? If not, you might just be overlooking some essential pieces of the historical and prophetic puzzle that lend credibility to the biblical narrative. The book of Daniel, a cornerstone of biblical prophecy, is often likened to the revelation of the Old Testament. This comparison underscores the significance of Daniel's prophecies, which span vast stretches of time and foretell momentous events in human history. A striking feature of biblical prophecy is God's penchant for covering the same period of time using different symbols. This approach is evident in the book of Daniel, where two parallel narratives emerge. The first is King Nebuchadnezzar's intense dream, a haunting vision of a statue made of various metals, each representing a different kingdom. The second, Daniel's night vision, though depicting the same kingdoms, employs different symbols, presenting them as beasts. Intriguingly, these symbolic representations bear an eerie resemblance to the foreboding signs of the Antichrist's rise in the book of Revelation. This convergence of Daniel's apocalyptic visions and the chilling prophecies revealed in Revelation could send shivers down your spine. It presents a stark warning of the inevitable chaos that will engulf the world in the final days. These prophecies are not for the faint-hearted. They confront us with the reality of worldly powers, treacherous traps, and the looming trials and persecutions awaiting God's faithful. But amidst the terror, they also remind us of God's comforting promises of protection. Today we will delve into the first of these prophecies, King Nebuchadnezzar's disturbing dream, and its interpretation by Daniel, his trusted advisor and a man of God. We will examine the parallels between this haunting dream and Daniel's own apocalyptic visions and explore their implications for humanity's future. As we delve deeper into these prophecies, brace yourself for the spine-chilling revelations that await. There's a journey ahead, a journey through time, kingdoms, and the intricate web of prophecy and history. As we traverse this path, we will uncover the profound truths hidden within the prophetic visions of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar experienced a dream so intense that he demanded an interpretation. Imagine the king tossing and turning in his royal bed, haunted by an enigmatic vision of a colossal statue. This was no ordinary statue, it was a towering figure constructed of various materials, each representing a different epoch of human civilization. The statue's head was crafted from pure gold, gleaming with majesty and power. This was the first kingdom, the Babylonian Empire, symbolizing Nebuchadnezzar's own reign. The Babylonians were renowned for their wealth and grandeur, characteristics embodied in the golden head of the statue. Descending from the golden head, the statue's chest and arms were forged from silver. Silver, though valuable, is lesser in worth compared to gold. This was a subtle hint at the impending decline in the power and prestige of the successive kingdom. Moving further down, the belly and thighs of the statue were made of brass. Brass, although sturdy, lacked the luster and value of gold and silver, indicative of the further decline of the kingdoms to come. The statue's legs were of iron, a material known for its strength but lacking in preciousness. Iron symbolized a kingdom of great power but devoid of the grandeur and opulence of its predecessors. Lastly, the feet were a mixture of iron and clay, an unstable combination emblematic of a divided kingdom with inherent weaknesses foreshadowing its inevitable downfall. In the midst of this bewildering vision, King Nebuchadnezzar was fortunate to have Daniel, his trusted advisor. Daniel, a man of profound faith and wisdom, was able to interpret this dream. By divine revelation, he provided a remarkable interpretation, revealing a prophecy about the rise and fall of world kingdoms. Daniel's interpretation of the dream would unveil a prophecy of world kingdoms that would leave you astounded. This enigmatic dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, as interpreted by Daniel, becomes a fascinating chronicle of human civilization, a sweeping prophecy that transcends time and continues to intrigue scholars and theologians to this day. So what did the different parts of the statue represent in Nebuchadnezzar's dream? Let's decipher the symbolism. The golden head of the statue signified none other than the Babylonian Empire, the kingdom in power during Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel's time. Babylon, renowned for its splendor and majesty, was aptly represented by gold. King Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of this magnificent empire, was a man of great ambition and audacity. He was so convinced that his reign was eternal that he commanded the construction of a 90-foot-tall replica of the statue from his dream. But there was a twist. 
Instead of using different metals to represent different eras, as in the dream, Nebuchadnezzar ordered the entire statue to be crafted from gold. This was a bold declaration of his certainty that Babylon, his golden kingdom, would endure forever. However, as we all know, pride comes before a fall, and Nebuchadnezzar was no exception. Daniel, his trusted advisor and a man of God, cautioned him. He warned the king that his unchecked ego, his unyielding pride, could lead to his downfall. But Nebuchadnezzar, blinded by his arrogance, ignored this prophetic warning. The inevitable happened. Nebuchadnezzar's empire, the golden head of the statue, fell. This was a mighty blow to the king's ego and a stark reminder of the transient nature of worldly power. But it was more than just the end of one empire. It marked the beginning of a series of kingdoms, each represented by a different part of the statue. Each kingdom in its time would rise and fall, just as Babylon did. This is a fascinating tale of power, pride, and prophecy. It serves as a reminder that no matter how powerful a kingdom may seem, it is not eternal. It also underscores the importance of humility and the dangers of unchecked pride. Nebuchadnezzar's fall was but a prelude to the unfolding of the subsequent kingdoms. The prophetic dream was a roadmap of empires to come, a chronicle of the rise and fall of great kingdoms, foretold in the language of dreams and visions. In Daniel chapter 7, God gave Daniel a vision at night, revealing the same sweep of time from Babylon to the second coming of Christ. This nocturnal revelation, unlike the precognitive dream of Nebuchadnezzar, was a vision bestowed upon Daniel, a man of faith and steadfastness. The symbolism used by the divine to represent the world's kingdoms was different, yet echoed the same prophetic timeline. In his night vision, Daniel saw four beasts emerging from the sea, each beast symbolizing a different kingdom. The first beast, a lion with eagle's wings, symbolized Babylon, aligning with Nebuchadnezzar's vision of the head of gold. This beast's wings were plucked off and it was made to stand on two feet like a man, mirroring the humanization of Nebuchadnezzar himself after his period of madness. According to history, the kingdom of Babylon reigned supreme on earth from 605 BC to 539 BC. On October 13th, 539 BC, the golden kingdom of Babylon came to an inglorious end. The second beast, a bear raised up on one side, represented the Medo Persian Empire. It had three ribs in its mouth, signifying the three provinces it had conquered. This beast was comparable to the chest and arms of silver in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. During the reign of Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's proud and arrogant grandson Cyrus the Mede laid siege to Babylon and overthrew it. The kingdom, Medo-Persia, ruled from 539 BC to 331 BC. The third beast, a four-headed leopard with wings, symbolized the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great. The brilliant young Greek general Alexander the Great defeated Persia's Darius III at the Battle of Arbela in 331 BC. At the age of 23, young Alexander became ruler over the most extensive empire the world had known to that time. The four heads represented the four generals who divided the empire after Alexander's death. Interestingly, when Alexander the Great died, his empire was divided between his four top generals. This kingdom ruled from 331 BC to 168 BC. On June 22, 168 BC, at the Battle of Pydna, the Empire of Alexander the Great perished, 155 years after his death. This beast corresponded to the belly and thighs of brass in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful with iron teeth and bronze claws, represented the Roman Empire. It had ten horns, symbolizing the ten divisions of Rome, which aligns with the legs of iron and feet of iron and clay in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The Roman Empire, the legs of iron, or in Daniel's vision, the fearsome beast, succeeded the Greek reign, thus becoming the Fourth World Empire. The great kingdom of Rome ruled from 168 BC to AD 476. Rome was a ruthless nation that ruled with a rod of iron. Her Caesars called themselves gods and demanded worship and obedience from everyone. Rome ruled the longest and reached the farthest of all empires, but Rome too met an end, but not at the hands of a more powerful kingdom. Just as Daniel predicted, no other worldwide empire succeeded Rome. When it then ended, the kingdom divided into ten parts. Now, up through this point, the two prophecies run completely parallel to each other, but when the prophecy of Daniel 7 came to Rome, God gave Daniel much more detail than before. 
The ten horns of the fourth beast represented the ten pagan godless fragments of the Roman Empire that became today's nation of Europe. After more than 600 years in power, God accurately predicted ancient Rome would not be followed by another world empire, but would disintegrate into smaller kingdoms. Through unparalleled luxury, political corruption and moral decay, Rome lost its stability and strength. It became easy prey for tribes of barbarians that began to invade the empire during the 4th century AD. By AD 476, Rome had divided into ten parts, some of which are now extinct. The current nations of Europe developed from these tribes of the divided Roman Empire. Some were strong, some were weak. As per Daniel 2.43, whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay. Many world rulers have tried to unite the nations of Europe, often through royal marriages, mingling themselves with the seed of men. God's prediction of world empires to the end of time has been remarkably accurate. According to scripture, no effort to unite the divided kingdoms of old Rome can ever succeed. The eerie similarity between these two prophetic revelations is more than mere coincidence. It is a testament to the unerring accuracy of divine prophecy, a chilling reminder of the impending trials and tribulations that await God's faithful in the end times. The symbols in Daniel's vision not only mirrored Nebuchadnezzar's dream, but also warned of the trials and persecutions awaiting God's faithful. But what do these prophecies mean for us today? Well, here's where the prophecy makes a heart-wrenching jab into the distant future, our present. In Daniel 7, it reads that there's this little horn power before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. There was to be no other world power, you might say. What's happening here? These spine-tingling symbols of the statue and beasts in Daniel's visions foreshadow the rise of the Antichrist and the descent into darkness foretold in Revelation. But we are in the book of Daniel. Do these hair-raising parallels between the oppressive rule of ancient Babylon and the looming reign of the Antichrist send shivers down your spine as you anticipate the horrors of the end times? The prophecies of Daniel, particularly those in chapters 2 and 7, are not just ancient bedtime stories. They represent a divine blueprint that has significantly shaped the course of human history. Each kingdom represented in Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel's vision symbolizes an empire that has left an indelible mark on the world. What's striking is the accuracy with which these prophecies have been fulfilled. Each empire rose and fell, just as predicted, underscoring the veracity of Daniel's prophecies. This historical accuracy serves as a reminder that the prophecies were not mere conjectures, but divine revelations. Beyond the historical and prophetic accuracy, there's a profound lesson for us. This is a stark reminder for us in an era obsessed with power and wealth to focus on what is truly eternal. In the face of these prophecies and their implications, it's natural to experience a sense of awe and perhaps even fear. But it's crucial to remember that these prophecies are not merely warnings, but also promises. Promises of a divine plan that's unfolding and of a God who is in control. As we grapple with the implications of these prophecies, remember God's promises of comfort and protection. The prophecies of Daniel, laden with historical truths and divine revelations, are a testament to God's sovereignty over the course of history.